It's about that time. Welcome to the Word of the Day. It's been 430 years since, since the great patriarch Abraham walked the earth. Then the Lord raises up a new prophet to govern the nation of Israel. Join me today as we visit the Lord's prophet, the life of the great prophet Samuel as he led the nation of Israel as they battled the Philistines. This is Prophet Samuel, book number one. There was a man, a Zuphite, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroam. He had two wives. One was called Hannah, and the other was called Panina. Panina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, Elkanah went up from his hometown to worship and sacrifice to the Lord at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, the high priest, were. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife Penina and to all her sons and daughters. But Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her so very much. But the Lord had closed her womb. If we notice several times in scripture, we see a husband who favored one wife over another. The Lord seemed to always make the most loved wife barren. It happened with Abraham and Sarah. It happened with Jacob and Rachel. And now it's happening with Elkanah and Hannah that the Lord is leveling the playing ground since one is loved so much. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival Penina kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on for many years. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her until she cried and would not eat. Her husband, Elkanah, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you so sad? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once, when they had finished eating and drinking in the land of Shiloh, Hannah got up, she stood up and walked off and went to the tabernacle of the Lord. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting in a chair by the door to the tabernacle of the Lord. And in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly while at the temple. And she made a vow saying, Lord, if you will only look on your humble servant's misery and remember me and not forget me, but give me a son, then I will give him back to you for all the days of his life. He will serve you. No razor shall ever touch his head. And as she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her. Hannah was praying in her heart. Her lips were moving, but no words were coming out. Eli thought that she was drunk, so he said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Hannah said, Not so, my Lord. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered her, Go in peace, my daughter, and may the Lord God of Israel grant you what you asked him for. Hannah said, May I find favor in his eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and she no longer looked sad. Early the next morning they rose and worshipped before the Lord and then went back to their home in Ramah. Later Elkanah lay with his wife Hannah and the Lord remembered her. So Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son and she named him Samuel. She named him Samuel saying, Because I, I asked the Lord for him. When Elkanah went up with all his families to offer the annual sacrifice again to the Lord, and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After I have weaned the boy, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always with the priests. Do whatever seems best to you, Elkanah said. Stay here until you have weaned Samuel. So Hannah stayed at home and nursed her son until she weaned Samuel. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, Young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, 
an ephod of flour and a skin of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. Hannah said to the high priest Eli, Pardon me, Lord. Surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I am coming to give him back to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. So Eli worshiped the Lord there. This is 1 Samuel chapter 1. Now the priests Eli's son, Hophni and Phinehas, were wicked men. They had no regard for the Lord, even though they were priests. Now it was the practice of the priests that whenever any of the people offered a sacrifice, the high priest's servants would come with a three-pronged fork in his hand while the meat was being boiled, would plunge the fork into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. Whatever the fork brought up, the priest was able to take it for themselves. Now Eli's sons treated all the Israelites wickedly who came to Shiloh. Before the fat was even burned, Eli's sons would come and say to the people who were sacrificing, Give the priest some meat to roast. The priest won't accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. If the person said to him, Let the fat be burned first, and then take whatever you want, they would answer, No, hand it over now. If you don't, I'll take it by force. This sin of Eli's son was very great in the Lord's sight, for they were treating the Lord's offering with contempt. But young Samuel ministered before the Lord as a young boy wearing a linen ephod. Each year his mother made him a little robe and took it to him when she went out with her husband to offer the annual sacrifice. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave back to the Lord. Then they would go home, so the Lord was gracious to Hannah, and she gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Now Eli, who was a very old man by this time, heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the woman who served at the entrance to the tabernacle of meeting to the Lord's temple. So he said to them, Why do you do such things? I heard from all the people that the, the wicked deeds you're doing. My sons, the report I hear spreading among the Lord's people is not good. If a man sins against another man, God may mediate for the offender. But if anyone sins against the Lord, who will intercede for them? His sons, however, did not listen to their father's rebuke, for it was the Lord's will to put them to death. But the young boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. Then a man of God came to Eli the high priest and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Did I not clearly reveal myself to the house of your forefather Aaron when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Did I not choose him among all the tribes of Israel to be my high priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense and to wear the ephod before me? Did I not give to the house of the Levites all the offerings of the children of Israel made by fire? Why do you show such disrespect to my sacrifice and my offering which I have commanded in my dwelling place and honor your sons more than me to make yourselves fat with the best of all the offerings of Israel, my people? For Eli's sons, your sons, have stole the offering reserved for God. Therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your of your father will walk before me forever. But now the Lord has said, for those who honor me, I will honor. And for those who despise me, I shall barely esteem. Behold, the days are coming that I will cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house so that there will not be an old man in your tribe, despite all the good which God has does for Israel. There shall not be anyone in your house that lives to be an old man forever. But any of your men whom I do not cut off 
from my altar shall make you cry and grief and grieve your heart. So while in the prime of their lives they would die, now it shall be a sign to you, the Lord said, that it will happen to your sons, Hophni and Phineas, that they will die on the same day. On the same day they shall die, both of them. Then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before my anointed forever. It shall come to pass that everyone who is left in your house will come and bow down to him for a piece of silver or a morsel of bread and say, Please put me in one of your priestly positions that I may eat a piece of bread. This is First Samuel chapter number 2. Now the young child Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. No one had visions. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was sleeping in his place, and his eyesight began to fail that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel had laid down to go to sleep that the Lord called to Samuel, and he answered, Here I am, and he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me? Eli said to him, I didn't call you, go lie down. And he went and lay down, and the Lord called to Samuel again, yet again and said, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. And Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go lie down again. For Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Either was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, Samuel. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. And Eli perceived that it was the Lord that had called the child. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and it shall be, if God calls you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hears you. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hears you. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both ears of every one that hears it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows of, because his sons made themselves vile and wicked before me, and he did not stop them. This is just an indication of how God holds men, fathers, responsible for governing their children. Thank the Lord for the mercy and grace of the Lord Jesus. So the Lord said, Therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli, the punishment for the sins of Eli and his family shall not be, shall not be prevented by all their sacrifices, but shall, but shall infallibly be executed. Samuel laid down until the morning and opened the doors to the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. And then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here I am. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said to you? I pray you hide it not from me. God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all the things that he said to you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And Eli said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems pleasing in his sight. And Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. And none of Samuel's prophetic words fell to the ground. And all of his prophecies came true. All Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel. And this is 1 Samuel chapter number 3. The word of the Lord came to Samuel and to all Israel. So Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer 
and the Philistines pitched at, pitched at effect, and the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel, and when they were joined in battle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, and they killed the army about 4,000 men. And when the people came to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why wasn't the Lord with us in battle today before our enemies, the Philistines? Go get the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh and bring it to us, that when it comes among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people took it upon themselves to go and get the Ark. So the people sent message to Shiloh that they bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And the two sons, Eli's, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it came into the camp. All Israel shouted with a great shout so that the earth shook. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, Why is the camp of the Hebrews shouting? Then they realized that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp of Israel. The Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is coming to the camp. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of this mighty God? This is the God that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong, the commanders of the Philistines said, and get hold of yourselves, men. You are Philistines, and you be not servants to the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Be strong like men and fight. The Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated, and Israel fled every man into his camp, and there was a a very great slaughter for there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen and the ark of God was taken and the two sons of Eli Hophni and Phinehas were killed so the prophetic word to Eli from the Lord came true both of his sons death in the same day then there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day and his clothes were torn and dirt was upon his head. When the man came into the city, he spoke to all the city and the city cried out. When Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, what is going on? Why is everybody crying? The man came to Eli quickly and told Eli, now Eli was 98 years old and his eyes were very weak that he could not see. And the man said to Eli, I ran out today. Israel fled from the Philistines and there was a great slaughter among our people. Uh, your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And the Ark of God was taken. When the man mentioned the Ark of God, Eli fell backwards off the seat he was sitting on by the side of a gate and his neck broke and he died. For he was a very old man and very heavy. And he had judged Israel 40 years. Now Phineas's wife was with child close to the time to be delivered. And when she heard that the ark of the God was taken and her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself down and wailed. As a result, she went into labor. As she was feeling like she was about to die, she gave birth. Her midwife said to her, Fear not, for you have given birth to a son. But she didn't respond, neither did she pay attention to it. She later named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken and because her father-in-law and her husband are dead. This is 1 Samuel chapter number 4. After the after the Philistines had captured the Ark of the Covenant, they took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then they carried the Ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside their idol Dagon. When the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon, their idol, fallen on his face on the ground before the Ark of the Lord. So get this, the Philistines picked up their fake god off the floor, get it back up next to the Ark of the Covenant, next to the Almighty God. But the following morning when they rose up, there was Dagon again, laying with his face on the ground before the Ark of the Lord. His head and his hands had been broken off and was lying near the entrance to their temple. 
This is why after that neither the priests of Dagon nor any others who entered Dagon's temple or Astod would step on the threshold of the doorway because his head and his hands were cut off and were laying there. So the Lord's hand was heavy on the people of Ashdod and its surrounding areas. He brought devastation on them and afflicted them with tumors. So from the moment they brought the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God into their pagan temple, stuff started happening to them. When the people of Asa saw what was happening, they said, the Ark of God of Israel must not stay here with us because his hand is afflicting us and on Dagon our God, some God. I find it interesting that they still call Dagon a God after all that. So they called together all the rulers of the Philistines and asked them, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They answered, Have the ark of God of Israel moved to Gath, like that's going to make a difference. So they moved the ark of the covenant of the God of Israel, but after they had moved it, the Lord's hand was against that city, throwing it into a great panic. He afflicted the people of the city, both young and old, with an outbreak of tumors. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron. So they moved it from city to city. Every time he afflicted one city, they would move it to another. As soon as the ark of the God of Israel entered Ekron, the people of the city cried out, They have brought the ark of the God of Israel around to kill us. And so they called together all the elders of the Philistines and said, Send the ark of the God of Israel away. Let it go back where it belongs, or will kill us all. For death had filled the city with panic. God's hand greatly afflicted them. Those who did not die were afflicted with tumors. It was truly great. This is 1 Samuel chapter number 5. When the ark of the Lord had been Philistine territory seven months, the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners and said, What shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us how we should send it back to the Israelites. They said, If you return the ark of the God of Israel, do send it back to them with a gift. All means send a sin offering to them what sin offering should we send to them? They replied, four gold tumors and five gold rats, according to the number of the five Philistine rulers, because the plague had touched everyone, including the rulers. Now the tumors that afflicted the Philistines were most likely inflamed lymph nodes. This is the most common symptom of the bubonic plague, which is often spread through rodents such as mice. Therefore, in order to appease the God of Israel, the Philistines sent gold replicas of the mice and the tumors that afflicted them. So the Philistine priests and the diviners said to make models of the tumors and of the rats that were destroying the country, and give glory to Israel's holy God. They thought that the Lord would lift his hand from them by doing this. When the rulers delayed in sending back the Ark of the Covenant, the diviners and the priests said to the rulers of the Philistines, Why are you delaying and hardening your heart as the Egyptians did and how they afflicted the Pharaoh? When Israel's God dealt harshly with them, did they not send the Israelites so that they could have peace? Now get a new cart ready with two cows that had been calved which meant a cow that had just given birth, and also one that had never been yoked. This meant that the cows that they sent would be untrained and never pulled a cart before. Take the ark of the Lord God of Israel and put it on the cart, and in the chest beside it put the gold objects you are sending back with him as a sin offering. Send it on its way, but keep watching it. If it goes up to its own territory toward Beth Shemesh, then the Lord has brought this great disaster on us. But if it does not go, then we will know that it was not the hand of the Lord that struck us, but that this all happened by chance. So they did so. They took two such cows and hitched them to the cart. They placed the ark of the Lord on the cart, and along with it the chest containing the gold rats and the gold tumors. Wouldn't you know it, the cows went straight up toward Beth Shemesh, keeping on the road and mooing all the way. The cows did not turn to the right or to the left, 
The rulers of the Philistines followed them as far as the borders of Beth Shemesh. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were harvesting their wheat in the valley, and they looked up and saw the Ark of the Covenant. They jumped and jumped, rejoicing at the sight of it. The cart came to the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh, and there it stopped beside a large rock. The people chopped up the wood of the cart and sacrificed the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. The Levites then took down the Ark of the Covenant together with the chest containing the gold objects and placed them on the large rock. The people of Beth Shemeth offered burnt offerings and made sacrifices to the Lord. The five rulers of the Philistines saw all this and then returned to the country that same day. The large rock on which the Levites set the Ark of the Lord is a witness to this day in the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh. But God struck down some of the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, putting seventy of them to death, because they look inside the Ark of the Covenant. The people mourned because of the heavy blow the Lord had dealt them. And the people of Beth Shemesh asked, Who can stand in the presence of the Lord? Who will the Ark go to from here? Then, then they sent messages to the people of kiriath Jerem, saying, the Philistines have returned the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up to your town. This goes to show that God doesn't need an army to fight his battles, but that he uses us because he wants relationship with his people. When God allowed the ark of the covenant to be taken, he made Israel reverence him more, and he made the Philistines stand in awe of his mighty power. This is 1 Samuel chapter number 6. So the men of kiriath Jerem came and took up the ark of the Lord. They brought it to Abinadab's house on the hill and consecrated Eliezer his son to guard the ark of the Lord. The ark remained in kiriath Jerem a long time, twenty years in all. Then the people of Israel turned back to the Lord. So Samuel said to the Israelites, If you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then rid yourselves of these foreign idols, the Baals and the Ashtoreths, and commit yourself to the Lord and serve Him only, and He will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So the Israelites put away their idols, the Baals and the Ashtoreths, and served the Lord only. Then Samuel said, Assemble all Israel, at Mizpah, and I will intercede with the Lord for you. When they had assembled at Mizpah, they drew water and poured it out before the Lord God. On that day they fasted and they confessed, We have sinned against the Lord our God. Now Samuel was serving as leader of Israel at Mizpah. When the Philistines heard that Israel had assembled at Mizpah, the rulers of the Philistines came up to attack them. When the Israelites heard of it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. They said to Samuel, Do not stop crying out to the Lord our God for us, that he may rescue us from the hand of the Philistines. Then Samuel took a baby lamb and sacrificed it as a burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf, and the Lord answered him. When Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to engage Israel in battle. But that day the Lord thundered with a, land, with a loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them into such a panic they, that they ran before the Israelites in confusion and were fighting each other. The men of Israel rushed out to Mizpah and pursued the Philistines, slaughtering them along the way to the point below beth -car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen. He named it Ebenezer saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they stopped invading Israel's territory. Throughout Samuel's lifetime, the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. The towns from Ekron to Gath that the Philistines had captured from Israel were restored to Israel. There was peace between Israel and the Amorites also. Samuel continued as Israel's leader all the days of his life. From year to year he went in a circle from Bethel to Gilgal to Mizpah, judging Israel and all those places. But he always went back to Ramah, where his home was, and there he also held court for Israel, and he built an altar there to the Lord. This is 1 Samuel chapter number 7. 
When Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah, and they served at Beersheba. But the sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after dishonest money and accepted bribes and perverted the course of justice. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said this, Give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you that they are rejecting, but it is me they are rejecting as their king. As they have done from the day I brought them out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and, ser and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly, and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his own. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking for a king. He said, This is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons as soldiers to be commanders and others to plow his field and reap his harvest and still others to make weapons of war and equipments for his chariots. He will take your daughters to work in all manner of service. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to those that attend to him. He will take a tenth of your flocks and you will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out for help from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and to fight our battles. When Samuel heard all that the people said, he repeated it before the Lord. The Lord answered, listen to them and give them a king. Then Samuel ordered the Israelites, everyone to go back to their own towns. This is 1 Samuel chapter number 8. There was a man named Kish from the clan of the Matrites, from the tribe of Benjamin, who had a son named Saul. Saul was the most handsome man in all Israel. He was a head taller than everyone else, so basically he was tall, dark, and handsome. Now the donkeys belonging to Saul's father Kish were lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, Take one of the servants with you and go and look for the donkeys. So he passed through the hill country of Ephraim, and through the area of Shalisha, but they did not find them. They went on into the area of Shalem, but the donkeys weren't there either. Then he passed through the territory of Benjamin, but they did not find them. When they reached the area of Zeph, Saul said to his servant, Come, let us return home, or my father will stop thinking about the donkeys and start worrying about us. The servant replied, Look, in this town there is a man of God. He is highly respected, and everything he says comes true. Let's go there now. Perhaps he will tell us which way we should go. If we go, we cannot go empty. What can we give the man? For when going to inquire of a man of God, you should always bring an offering. The food in my sacks is gone, says Saul. We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? The servant answered him, Look, he said, I have a quarter of a shekel of silver. I will give it to the man of God so that he will tell us which way to take. Formerly in Israel, if someone went to inquire of a prophet, they would say, Come, let us go to the seer, because the prophet of today used to be called a seer. So Saul said, Come, let's go. So they set out for the town where the prophet was. As they were going up the hill to the town, they met some young women coming out to draw water, and they asked him, Is there a seer here? They answered, He's ahead of you. Hurry now. He has just come to our town today. The people have a sacrifice on the mountain. As soon as you enter the town, you will find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. The people will not begin eating until he comes because he must bless our sacrifice. Afterwards we will eat. Go on and hurry. 
they went into the town, and as they were entering it, there was Samuel coming toward them on his way up into the mountain. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Samuel, About this time tomorrow I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him to be king over my people Israel. He will deliver them from the hands of the Philistines. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, This is the man that I spoke to you about. He will govern my people Israel. Saul approached Samuel in the gateway and asked, Would you please tell me where the seer's house is? And Samuel said, I am the seer. Go up into the hills, for today you are to eat with me. And in the morning I will send you on your way and will tell you everything that is in your heart. As for the donkeys you lost three days ago, do not worry about them. They have been found. You are to whom all the desire of Israel is turned, if not to you, then your whole family line. For God has called you to be king over Israel. In shock, Saul answered, I'm a Benjamite from the smallest tribe of Israel, and is not my clan the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why do you say such things to me? As they were walking, Samuel brought Saul and his servant into the hall and seated them at the head of the table. Those who were invited, about which was thirty in number, Samuel said to the cook, Bring the piece of meat I gave you, and one, the one I told you about is here. So the cook took out the thigh, which was for Saul, and set it before him. Samuel said, Here is what has been kept for you because it was set aside just for this occasion. I have invited guests, and Saul dined with Samuel that day. After they came down from the hills to the town, Samuel talked to Saul on the roof of his house. Then they rested. When they rose up about daybreak, Samuel called to Saul on the roof, Get ready, and I will send you home. When Saul got ready, he and Samuel went outside together. As they were going down to the edge of the town, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the servant to go on ahead of you. And the servant did so. But you stay here for a while, so that I may give you a message from God. And this is 1 Samuel chapter number 9. Please join me next time for the reign of King Saul in the continuation of the prophet Samuel, book number 1. Thank you for taking this time with me. Joshua 1 and 8 says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Don't just let these words be pages in a book, but write them on the pages of your heart. Let them become a part of you. Meditate on them day and night. Please assist me in spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ by sowing a seed. I thank you in advance for your generous gift. Please like and share and by all means subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you again next time. May the Lord Most High bless us all with wisdom and understanding and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Blessings and shalom until next time. Have a blessed day.